What's up guys? Welcome back to Carson's IH Garage. Thank you for joining me in the midst of all this COVID crap. Uh, nice to see you guys. Today we're going to be installing axle saps in my freshly rebuilt Dana 27 axle. I'm going to show you how to clean up your brake drum backplates, give them a quick paint, uh, put in seals, uh, press on bearings, and we're going to install them, rebuild the rear drum brakes, slide the drums, get them all set up, how you would before you go ahead and bleed them. So let's get right to it. Okay, so here I have my nasty old and, and gross backing plates, hubs, and shim, as well as my key, my washer, and my castle nut. Uh, these parts are still good. Um, I inspected them. The key isn't cracked at all, and uh, it's just a little bit gross, but I'll just put it right back in there. It doesn't matter. And I'll clean up the washer too, but that doesn't bother me. So these are the three main parts that... Um, that dress your axle whenever you install it um, you know aside from your bearing that slides on then it goes this which is your shim that holds a, an oil seal that keeps the the grease can contained inside the bearing because that mates right up against it uh, when you slide it on the axle and then it goes your backing plate which gets bolted in to the flange on the axle that's really the only thing keeping your axle in but I'll show you a neat little trick um, that cost nothing as long as you have the stuff laying around and it can be done with a nail and a hammer um, and that ensures that the race of your bearing which is what the the tapered roller bearing will ride inside it ensures that it won't back out on you you know sliding back and forth really easily so it'll give it something to bite onto uh, and make sure it's still in there and then I have my hub here uh, this hub is also really good but as you can see it's covered in rust and some oil um, and so we're just going to clean that up Give it a nice coat of paint, uh, clean out the keyway here in the mounting surface. Uh, I'll show you how to do that too. Um, my preferred method for cleaning everything up here is to put a wire brush on the drill press or in like a, a hand drill or something just to get in all these little crevices and kind of get everything. With the paint that I'll be using, you don't have to get this completely clean because um, I bought like an off-the-shelf rust converter, which is like $5 at Walmart is where I found it. I buy two cans of it just so I have it around because it's a nice gloss black that looks good in any chassis um, or part that's going to see grease and oil or even gasoline I've spilt on it, and it, it won't strip the paint off like any other conventional uh, spray paint. Uh, so I'll show you guys exactly where, and I'll link it in the description to where you can find it and buy it on Amazon. It's really good paint. I like to use it. It requires really no prep, just as long as you get it 95% grease free and you knock off all the heavy rust and you don't use a primer, you just lay it right on there. Uh, so I'm going to set you guys up and you'll just watch me clean these parts with the wire wheel. So I got these parts cleaned up for the most part. Um, they still got some service to sign up, but like I said before, um, they don't need much cleanup as long as you just kind of wipe the dust off and get a lot of the heavy rust knocked off. You can go ahead and um, go ahead and paint it. Um, it requires literally no prep, which is kind of nice. You just kind of literally paint over rust, and it's a rust encapsulator as well as a nice uh, protective paint. Um, next, I'm going to move to the bench grinder. Um, and I'll do the wire wheel on this and I'll just do it before and after so you guys don't have to watch me clean this because I know it's kind of boring just to watch somebody clean rusty parts but uh, here's the before and here's your after it's a lot better, uh, a lot cleaner still could be wiped down with uh, paint thinner or mineral spirits to clean it up but we're not going to do that um, now I'm going to clean up the hub with just a wire brush again I'm not going to film that uh, but what I do want to show you is the paint that I'll be using. So here's the paint. It is a Krylon Rust Protector Gloss Enamel. Uh, it literally does dry in 8 minutes, uh, up to 15 times faster than the leading rust competitor. Um, it is a very um, protective finish, like it says. It has superior corrosion protection as well as encapsulation. And they want you to paint it directly to the metal. Um, I half the stuff I don't even prime anyway. It's not even because I'm lazy. It's just because I know that I don't want a super smooth finish out of break backing plates. Like you're not even really gonna see them as long as you know paint it black, put it back. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, 
this was like five dollars a can or it was like 425 at Walmart so I picked up two cans just so I always have it like I said um, kind of comes with that little spray nozzle um, and so that's not bad and what's good about this is you can kind of pile it on and it'll still dry in like eight minutes like if you really pile it on maybe you have to wait 10 15 minutes but you get a nice protective coating um, and it doesn't really run at all you know you know, half the stuff that I'd be painting with this anyway wouldn't have a flat surface for it to run um, but you could really get a good coating out of this and it doesn't matter if your stuff still has like this surface rust or you, you didn't even bother wiping it down with a cloth um, which is why I like it and um, like I said, it's grease protective and, and gas protective so now um, I'm gonna clean this this up and this up with a little wire brush here and then I'll go ahead and give these pieces a coat so I have my parts laid out here, just on some cardboard and some plywood, nothing fancy. I don't own a professional paint booth or any really professional tools. I'm just working in my yard here. I'm in the woods painting. So um, I have my parts here. And what I like to do is I usually like to just lay like a tack coat. So I have my paint. I shook it up for five seconds because um, that's all you really need to do to remix the paint. Um, and I just like to go ahead and just kind of dust everything. And it's called a tack coat because you're just kind of laying down some paint. Um, that will dry fairly quickly within a few seconds, a few minutes, sorry. Uh, and then you can go ahead and add more. So you're doing a thinner coat of paint um, that you could add to later. So the hub. Then I kind of went a little bit there, but I wanted to get full coverage, and that's what you want to do. You just want to get full coverage. So now going back to the plate here, you can see it's already dry uh, in some parts. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit it with a full coat. Just getting all in there. Going around the edges, the tops of everything. And you see there, I really just piled it on. But that will dry and it will come out really nice. And that's the good thing with this paint. That's why I like it. And then I'm going to hit my bolts. Nothing fancy here. Next, when they dry, I'll turn them over. And I'll hit the other side. And then I'm going to go back here to my shim. Hit that one on another coat. Full coverage. Great. Now, um, I'm not going to worry too much about uh, hitting up the hub here. All I'm gonna do is turn it over. So let me get that flipped around. Just like that. And then in the back, going from rusty to not as rusty. <laughs> not as, you know nicer. So getting all the edges. All right, so now that my backing plate and everything, all that jazz is back from paint. Um, what I like to do first when um, when dressing the the backing plate with all the brake parts is I like to start with the wheel cylinder. Um, I already have the little prongs pressed in there that uh, push out. Alright, so I got my, my uh, wheel cylinder in with the little prongs, like I said. And after like 10 minutes of pain and suffering, I got that in with the arm. And the way this works is when your brake cable hooks in, it spreads the, the shoes like that, and that's how your parking brake works. And I'll show you how to set that up too. It's really easy. It's kind of cool. So all I gotta do now is just lay this in here, get it around these prongs, and um, I'll put in those little um, spring, those hold downs, and then uh, I'll wait to get those two blue springs there once it's mounted up. So before I go ahead and uh, dress the rest of the parts, what you wanna do is you wanna put anti-seize on your contact points. So there's one here, and there's one on the other side there. And that's what your edge of your shoes there especially right there as you're going to rub on as it stretches um as the 
shoes expand out into the drum and when you step on the brakes. So uh, it's always a good idea to use just the regular old ANC's lubricant, this little tube of Permatex. And you don't need a lot, you just really need to skim it. So, kind of that. And, oops, sorry. Like, like that. Get a little more on that one over there. That's all you really need to do, just so it's got something to glide over so it's not scraping the paint off and then contacting bare metal. So there you go. Now I'm going to put that on that, and I hope it will take me no more than like five seconds. So that took me a whole five seconds to do. Just got to push it in, make sure everything's engaged here. This is meant to be loose like that. So the only reason I did this ahead of time was to show you guys how to do it in a clear view, step by step kind of. Um, and because when it's on the car, I won't be able to show you that well, and I just kind of want to do it to get it over with. Uh, but I'll show you how to put on the shims and everything once I get to that point. Um, but, you know, I still have to hook up the parking brake cable, which I'll try to show you how to do. Uh, hook up your, your brake lines and everything. Um, and then you got to make sure, just some tips, make sure that this little window here is where this little sprocket, this kind of wheel, um, the spur is, so you can adjust your brakes. But I usually just take the drum on and off when I'm adjusting them. Uh, and then the one final thing that I can do here is uh, spread that out a little bit and put those little pieces on there. And those are just kind of guards and shields to keep the springs aligned uh, when they hook in on these two little tabs there. So I hope you enjoyed this segment. Uh, I think it'll be a few days, but for you it'll be like three seconds by the time I get that axle shaft from my buddy who's pressing the bearings on for me. Then we'll dress it all out, throw the hub on, do brake lines. Um, I'll, sh I'll uh, recommend a great link to show you how to bleed brakes, a video from another fellow YouTuber, and then we'll throw some wheels on it, we'll get it on the ground. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to install the uh, parking brake. So I got the parking brake here, um, and I got my just my brake shoes and stuff, like my assembly that I had before just kind of hanging there for now. Um, and one little trick I like to do is you take this, um, and you get yourself pair of needle nose um, you grab this with your hand and you kind of bite inside here to stretch the spring back and you hold it really tight with that and you'll be able to slide in uh, to that little arm here and I'll show you what the arm looks like it's this piece right on the back um, hold on there you go that little piece on the bag and that just slides in there and it it will sit in there, so that little nub that's on there will go behind here, and the rest of it will remain behind the drum. And as you pull on the cable, like I mentioned before, those shoes will expand out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Um, just a little tip when you're doing it. When you lock down on it, give yourself like an inch of cable to help you yourself slide it through that little thing there. Okay. All right, people, exciting times here. I just got my axle shaft back from my buddies. Uh, he just tapped the bearing on me. Um, the only reason I had him do it was because he ordered all of it and he gave me a sweet discount um, and everything like that. Used some nice SKF bearings and seals and he tapped it on there and I just greased it up with some nice wheel bearing grease, mobile one, you know, the good stuff. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'll bring you guys over to the, the axle in the car. I'm gonna throw a little um, gear oil on those splines just to get them lubricated when they go in there um, and then I'm gonna throw the race on but then I'm gonna show you a trick uh, real quick and how I get a little extra bite on that race to make sure your axle doesn't flop around so let me go over there and I'll show you guys that alright gang we're back here um, so I'm just gonna show you that trick that I was talking about where you get a little more bite on the race it's where you take um, one of these spring loaded center punches this is from Harbor Freight real cheap one um, in this outer journal here um, is where your race slides into. So all I'm going to do is take my center punch and start making little indentions here of raised metal. And what that's going to do is it's, it's going to raise up the metal after it's made that, that little punch there. Um, and it's going to kind of bite into that race like teeth. Um, and you do that all around, kind of just spacing them out. Just just do ones, that's all you really need. And then um, 
you could take a little bit of Loctite, um, just some blue Loctite if you want, or you could just leave it alone. I, I'm not really going to put Loctite on it, I don't think it does anything, because it, it kind of seems like you're just gluing in your, um, <laughs> your race, and uh, don't worry about that, just, you, you, you didn't see that. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come on, I'm going to slide in my shaft. What it really needs there, nothing crazy, just that little, like, staggered dent in there, just to give it a little bite. Um, so now it's it's pretty sharp in there, so it's got it's got some good bite to it, and that's what you want. So I'm going to go grab that shaft, and we'll slide her in. Alright, so I got the, the shaft slided in, um, slid in. I put um, gear oil on the splines, like I said, that's the same weight that I'll be using in the differential, so there's no change in viscosity there. Um, and then I threw my race on, make sure you do a, a nice uh, layer of grease inside the race as well, and make sure you throw that on. And then all you want to do is slide it in like that, and you see the race is kind of hard to get on because we did those little bites in it. So now what you want to do is you want to grab brass hammer, ball peen hammer, um, rubber hammer or, or plastic phenolic whatever you got that's soft enough to pound on this race I'm just gonna grab a ball peen hammer and just lightly tap it around and then I'm gonna grab a punch to really sink it in there but you don't want to go too tight because you don't want to bind up the shaft you want to make sure it spins nice and freely so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that quick and then we'll move on to dressing the axle and installing our final outer seal so what now we're gonna now what we're going to do is we're gonna take this uh, seal and push it in here, um, and that's gonna keep all the wheel bearing grease contained uh, inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a 1/8 socket, put it on the outside of this. You always want to hammer on the outer edge of the seal. This is a rigid plastic, and you just want to get it fully seated in there so it's flush with the back and it's not cro crooked or anything. All right, guys, it's late. I'm trying to finish this up, so I'm just kind of speed through the rest of this. I know it's not ideal, but I, I, I have to. So um, I got the seal pressed in, I got this up against there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my, my brake backing plate and I'm gonna swing this over and around and slide that on. And then I'm gonna get my four bolts. Um, I have two more over on the bench. And I'm just gonna bolt this up and it's gonna snug down nice. And then I'll show you how to just slide the hub on, a trick to tightening that down because your axle's gonna wanna spin on you. Um, and then, um, that's basically it so yeah let's get it done okay, with the backing plate and assembly slid over I slid in the four bolts put nuts on them you need a 916 wrench and a 916 socket and you can go ahead and, and uh, lock those down don't go too tight just kind of go a little bit past snug um, they don't really have a torque value and they don't really need a, a torquing pattern to them just get them nice and snug and then we can move on to the hub So I got my backing plate installed, my brake assembly. I showed you earlier how to do this. Um, and basically, I, all I had to do was put in these little um, prongs, they're just the retainer clips. Uh, and then I had these blue springs that just clip in there so you can slide that up and get like uh, needle nose pliers and just hook them on and just do one at a time. And they sit staggered like that from each other. So there's that. And now what you wanna do is you wanna get your hub and you wanna get your key and you want to lay it, I gotta rotate the drive shaft, but you want to lay it top like that and just place your key in. Make sure the surface is not coated with grease or oil. You don't have to like wipe it clean and get it completely oil free, um, but this should be a dry fit and it should slip together and lock on there just like a taper would on a drill chuck or something like that. So let me go grab the key, I'll slap that on there, throw the washer on there, throw the nut on there. I'll show you how to lock the hub to uh, tighten down that nut. It's no specification, just gotta get it snug. Throw a cotter pin in there. Um, and then I'll slide my brake drum in, show you how to adjust the brakes real quick. And then, yeah, that's it. We'll throw some wheels on it, we'll get this thing on the ground. Throw in that brake line and we'll call it a day or a night. All right, folks, what you wanna do is you wanna take your key. It's got this kind of end here where it slopes up. And that's what slides toward the uh, the center of your diff, the pumpkin there. And that just kind of presses in place. Sometimes you need to hammer it on. Other times you don't. Um, but it should be flush with the end here. So just make sure it is. Good. It might rock back and forth. That's just because of that little bump I was talking about. Um, and so now what you want to do is you want to take your 
hub and line up your keyway and just slide it on there. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not that good. All right, give me one sec. So that's in there now. The key is, is visible and it's not protruding any. Um, and also when I rotate this, you can see that drive shaft moves just like that. So now what you want to do is take your washer, it doesn't matter which way you put it on, you just kind of slide it on, take your castle nut, thread that on, if it will go on, come on. Quick tip for you guys, when you're tightening this castle nut, put it in third gear. It's the highest gear that you, in my case, um, and then I'll allow you to put your socket on it. In this case, the 1 8 inch socket, and then just snug it down and then throw in your cotter pin. So let me do that quick, and then we'll slide the brake germ over, get the brakes adjusted, put on my nice chrome fancy smanchy uh, grease cap here, and then um, I'll show you one final shot when I finally put the wheels back on, because I got a few things to button up that I don't want to bother filming. So, please enjoy the last few moments that you'll see before this thing is driving. Now that I got my cotter pin slapped on there, there's that little, like, spur gear, sprocket. Um, and as you turn that, the brake shoes will expand out into the drum. So it's a process of kind of like trial and error. Throw the drum on there, you spin it, uh, and it's loose, so you keep adjusting that wheel out until you feel these start to, to skid and cause resistance, and you back it off just a touch. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a ton of work. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Can't wait to get this thing on the road and you'll see it firsthand right here on Carson's IH Garage. Peace out, man. Thanks.